what can we do for our young people that are getting uh, entwined with rock music? And maybe you could elaborate on some of the dangers there. Yeah, rock music is a very powerful snare that demon spirits are using uh, to captivate the young people and draw them away from uh, Christ and his protection. In the book, uh, in the angel book, I have in there an experience that is very interesting due to the fact that the people who experience the rock music ensnarement were in our home uh, in the fall of 1991 and were seeking very special help. They came all the way from uh, across the world. Uh, the parents are super wealthy and uh, what happened here is that this man married this fine young lady and uh, it wasn't too long after that that he started to have some real problems. And uh, here's what happened. They went on their honeymoon and entering a big city, they saw all of these billboards and signs talking about this, this uh, artist, rock artist and his gang that was going to be there playing. Mm -hmm. And the bride said to the husband, oh, will, will you buy me tickets? We'll go and see it. And he had just decided in his heart that he was not going to go to these concerts anymore. You see? He had decided that. But then he got this tremendous feeling that, man, this is our honeymoon. This is, you know, I've got to do something for my bride that's going to really please her. And he gave in and went to the rock concert. And while they were in the rock concert, uh, like the high priest used to say, when a person in, enters an establishment that is dedicated to the service of the great master, Meaning Satan. Yeah. Such as astrologers, fortune tellers, different capacities, hypnotists, mm -hmm. and people like that. The angels of the Lord are not able to come in there. But he did say at one time that the spirit of the creator could. There was no limit to the spirit of the creator. These rock artists usually uh, dedicate the building or the, the area that's going to be covered by uh, the listeners. Mm -hmm. They circle it three times in one day or three times, the three consecutive days. And they, they, chant, they, they sang a mitra, which is a, a, a prayer for possession. And they actually prayed to the great master and his angels that they will captivate every young person that enters that area. So what happened is this. They, they come out of this place, and the next day they're, they're driving down the road, and she sees the word green. Oh, no, oh, no, excuse me. Harley Davidson motorcycle. She, they were following a Harley Davidson motorcycle, and the guy had, you know, on the back of him, I mean, a big sign, Harley Davidson on, on his jacket, and things like that. And uh, she started to, to cry. Cry for no reason at all. And, 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 the, and her husband says, What's the matter with you? Are you hurting somewhere? No, but for some reason, I keep just crying. He said, look, stop this nonsense. So uh, they go down the, 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 the road, and they see a sign, and on it says green, we'll say a green label, tomatoes. You see. And she starts crying again. That's an hour later, for no reason at all. Boy. And do you know that uh, uh, she started to go into uh, almost trance in difficult situations that, that were unbelievable? And uh, the, the father phoned me up from, from uh, across the world and said, our son-in-law and our daughter wants to go to Endicott, New York to see you so you can pray for her. And she believes if she be anointed that the whatever is, is taking place. The Some doctors. type of possession she was wrestling with. Yeah. We noticed when she was visiting us that she had something in her ear, in the little wire about uh, behind her ear and into her hair, and it was into her handbag, something in her handbag. She had a little player that was playing rock music. And he one morning came in to see us because he said, my wife can't come because she's been crying all night. 
Uh, but he said, uh, we, we hope that the ministry will agree to anoint her, you know. He said, well, and I asked him, I said, let me ask you, is your wife listening to rock music on her little Walkman? Uh, her little radio? Uh, it was a cassette player, right. tiny little one. He said, I'd hoped that you wouldn't ask me that question. He said, yes. And I explained to him, I said, powerful spirits have found an avenue to control your minds, I mean your wife's emotions. See? Here's the way it goes. The high priest said <laughs> that the demon spirits love to play games with Christians. Mm -hmm. First of all, do you love to move upon people's imagination and to create strong feelings of anger, fear, love, and uh, grief. They, make, they can create all these feelings into people, and people believe it's their own, uh, you know, it's their own being that feels this way. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, I told him how we we're going to pray for his wife. Went back, or he, he was, she was anointed, and they went back home, and things were not any better. Things were worse. Until one day, Daddy phoned me up, and he said, Roger, uh, my wife has had a terrible experience yesterday. She is, she doesn't have any broken bones, oh, but how, boy did the spirits ever, ever do her in. Almost kill her. He said, I wasn't in, in the kitchen and I heard go down the hallway to the bathroom. Then I heard this, you were yelling and screaming and help, help, help. Some invisible being grabbed her by the hair from the back brought her in, in, in the bathroom, and there was a tile floor. Threw her on her face, and bashed her head until blood was flowing all over from her nose. Her eyes were cut above her eyes. Um, and he came, and he said, he, and he, he said, Dear Jesus, please help. Because I told him that. If that something ever happened, and you have the, the, you know that it's the presence of demon spirits, you immediately Say, dear Jesus, please help. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the, the force gave up. And he says it's just like a strong man had her uh, one by one shoulder. in her hand, yeah. Bashing her head. And he brought her up and cleaned her up and all of that. And uh, he said, what uh, should we do? I said, what you're going to have to do is going to have, you're going to have to have your stop. I said, the idea of you and I and everybody else praying for her, mm -hmm. It's marvelous, you know, we should do it, we shouldn't stop. But you've got to have her pray for help herself. He says, you can't pray for help. Because as soon as she starts praying, her jaws lock up. You see? And as soon as she says Jesus, it's like uh, pushing needles into her ears. You see? And uh, so anyway, I said, you take her like she was a two-year-old and have her repeat every word after you. Mm -hmm. And do you know that she couldn't open her mouth, but she could say, Dear Jesus, mm -hmm. please help, you know? And she started to pray. She said, you got to pray for herself. She got to pray for divine grace. And you, you, you instruct her. You, you, you have her pray along with you. And that broke the bond of bondage and that she was free. She had a beautiful child, and they got a letter a few months back, uh, you know, and they're happy.